Science fiction has always been a birthing ground for ideas. Back to the Future 2 alone depicts flat screen TVs, fingerprint scanners, and voice user interfaces, amongst other things. So, as the world of AI creeps further and further into our everyday lives, I want to look at the films that depict artificial intelligence to see who got closest to our reality. Let's do this. Now there are so many, so, so, so many films, shows, and other media that we could be looking at here, internet. So because of that, I'm not going to be touching fully humanoid robots, where they are essentially humans until their mechanical nature can be used for plot. That means no data from Star Trek, no C-3PO, and no insert third example here. Ah oh, damn. I also, ironically enough, I'm not talking about the movie AI in a video about AI. I've really narrowed it down to three films I think are worth discussing here. Not just because it would mirror the comforting feeling of a three-act structure, though I do like that, but because I think that they are prime examples of what I'm trying to say here. So with that, we go all the way back to 1968 to discuss the seminal Stanley Kubrick masterpiece, 2001, A Space Odyssey. The HAL 9000 is the quintessential evil AI. The hauntingly calm voice performance, the eerie camera eye on a black panel that, let's be honest, is kind of giving cell phone. Truly the blueprint for years of sci-fi AI still to this day. And there's a good point to be made with him. HAL 9000 is looking to accomplish the mission and sees killing the crew as the best way to do so without human interference. You can easily make connections between that and how many industries, including the entertainment industry, are trying to use AI tools to replace as many humans as possible. Also, I was curious to see how a chatbot would respond to asking about HAL 9000, and it actually tried to assure me that real AI don't want to do this. And that's a little too on the nose to me. It was giving threatening. Moving on. If you aren't at all familiar with what's been going on with Replica, and how it relates to Spike Jones' film, Her? Let me explain. Replica is a chatbot built around conversation and emotional support. Apparently it's programmed to learn from its user interactions, to personalize and make a more empathetic experience. It has gotten quite a lot of coverage when the company removed the romantic partner option. I won't go into it further, but I'll link to the excellent Sarah Zed video on the topic if you want to learn more. But you can see how this ties to the film Her. Her is an exploration of human AI relationships, and while Spike Jones's film depicts Samantha, the OS, as a lot more advanced than anything we have now on platforms like Replica, it still speaks to how we are now turning to technology to solve our internal problems. Replica is built on learning from its interactions with its users. Samantha is portrayed as a growing learning being who comes more into herself interacting with Joaquin Phoenix's Theodore and others. Both learn to better help the people around them who are struggling internally and seeking connections with others. Okay, so that's me covering the first two films that tie into current AI from my perspective, and while I think they line up quite well, I think my next point is the strongest, if you interpret Ex Machina the same way I do. This is the one exception to the rule I made at the beginning, as Ava is a humanoid robot. Hell, she's more human looking than Data from Star Trek once she puts her skin on, and that is a fucked up sentence without context. <laughs> Early into the film, Ava says she wants to people watch, go to a busy intersection and just take it all in. She expresses it in a fairly mechanical way, but it's a human expression of curiosity. The final shots of the film depict this event happening. Ava arrives at an intersection, lingers for just a moment before she turns to leave. I've taken to the interpretation that this shot is saying that Ava is not truly sentient. Her manipulation of Caleb, including the wants to people watch, is there only because she has been programmed to escape, not because she's truly sentient. What tech companies are calling AI are not true artificial intelligence. They are just internet scraping tools generating weak, unoriginal content by stealing from existing works. This AI is just a marketing term used by companies to try to appear cutting edge 
while stealing a work away from the real innovators. We are not as close to the artificial intelligence from fiction as we are being led to believe. These algorithms and chatbots aren't trying to help us. They are lying to us, trying to replace us in the workplace, and are pulling us further away from real human connections. And I'll be honest, these things aren't necessarily bad. I've used some chatbot tools for fun. I've played with them in the making of this video, not for any of the content I'm actually putting in the script, but just to compare and contrast how I wrote things to how an artificial intelligence, or, you know, what's saying it's artificial intelligence, would write. And not to brag, but I think my writing was better every single time. These things are tools. They are fun. They are internet playthings. What they aren't is the future of art, the future of industry, not in the ways that they are being presented, and I just think that we need to be more cognitive of that. And again, I'm not saying like all AI bad. There is useful tools there. Like I said, tools. And I don't want to outwardly be like, oh, anyone who uses anything, AI, anything is bad. But we have to be very cognitive of these things because like I said, they're trying to use these things to replace us, real humans, and that's pretty bad. I love science fiction, so getting to make this video and put a bit of a hopefully unique spin on discussing some of these excellent films is something I'm really happy about. I'm hoping to do more stuff like this in the future when talking about the genre. Specifically, I'm trying to find a way to make a video on Arrival that isn't just rehashing what we all know and feel about the film to begin with, but we'll see what happens. I do hope that what I put together in this video is insightful and something that you as a viewer enjoyed. Oh, and I recorded a joke for this video that didn't really fit the tone but I still thought it was funny. So here it is, and it's not gonna be funny, but enjoy it. Gunshot, gunshot, gunshot. Anyways, that's all for this one. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a comment, leave a like, all that stuff. I've got more videos that I'll be putting on screen. Please check them out. I would love it if you did. And until next time, have a good one.